Jim Bowden is up to it again. Let's go talk about it. Ah, yes, another Jim Bowden article on The Athletic. Let's get into this, shall we? So if you haven't seen, I've made a couple of videos reacting to some Jim Bowden trade articles. Look up here somewhere. You'll find those uh, videos there. Um, but in this one, not really uh, necessarily about trades. I'm going to be honest. I haven't. I've only looked at the first one. I, I don't even know what to expect. I, I know the first one. I'll react to that first, but I don't even know what is after that one. The first one is the Orioles. I already know what that is, um, but this one, he is saying these are the moves that the first moves each American League team should make when the lockout ends. So let's go to the first one here. It is the Baltimore Orioles. He thinks the first move they should make is to sign Carlos Rodon to a one-year, $20 million deal. This already is just a horrible start for this is awful. I hate this move. This is not a good move. I don't see why the Orioles would want to do this. Could you make the argument? Yeah, Carlos Rodon, he can go to the Orioles, kind of restore some value a little bit. He was really good last year when he was healthy, but injury problems have plagued him. Could he go to the Orioles one year deal, restore some value? Sure. But why would the Orioles want to spend $20 million? It was a little different with the Blue Jays signing someone like Marcus Semien because the Blue Jays were a good team. The Orioles are not a good team. Uh, could you make the argument, well, they could bring him in and then maybe they can trade him at the deadline, but why would you risk spending $20 million on a guy that has injury problems? Uh, to me, this makes no sense for the Orioles to do it all. We're off to a terrible start here. Oh, I don't like this move. I don't like it for the Red Sox, for my Red Sox. He thinks they should sign Carlos Correa to a 10-year deal. It's, no. No, I don't think the Red Sox should sign Carlos Correa to a 10-year deal. You have some good infield prospects in your system already. Guys like Nick York, you know, you got Jeter Downs had a tough year last year, but he could definitely still bounce back. There is still talent with Jeter Downs. And you just recently drafted Marcelo Mayer. Yes, you don't know what he's going to end up being. I understand that. But that was your first round pick this year, fourth overall pick. To me, I don't see signing Carlos Rodon, uh, Carlos Rodon, Carlos Correa as an option. Heim Bloom is not going to do this. Could you make the argument? Yes, Xander Bogarts has a report out there that he wants to test free agency after the season. So sure, you have an option like that where if he does leave Carlos Correa, that there you go. There's your shortstop. But this year, what? Carlos Correa, who plays short, I guess Xander Bogarts would play second. But to me, this is not going to happen. And if you were going to spend this money, this money should have gone to Mookie Betts. There's no way the Red Sox threw 10 years, 300 million. And no, I don't think that's a move they should make. To me, I don't want the Red Sox to be locked up in, you know, a $300 million deal for a guy, you know, that has had back issues, supposedly. He's had problems staying on the field in the past. I don't think the Red Sox, a team like the Cubs could make some sense where, you know, they're in a bit of a retool mode right now where Carlos Correa could be the, you know, they could work their team around Carlos Correa. Even a team like the Nationals could make some sense, pair him up with Juan Soto and build around those two guys. Well, the Red Sox, they got a lot of options everywhere. I don't think they necessarily need to go after someone like a Carlos Correa. Could I see like a one-year deal for Trevor Story? Sure, I could definitely see that because Trevor Story, he can slide over to second if you wanted to do that way. But then you're not locked up to him. You know, you're locked up. You're not locked up with him for years to come. Don't like this. 0 for 2, Jim Bowden. Up next, he thinks the White Sox should go after Michael Conforto, sign him to a five-year, $90 million deal. There is some merit to this. You have Ottoman Hell right now in right field. If we go take a look at the right field projections, the White Sox, as of right now, they actually rank kind of in the middle. Uh, taking a look here, they are at number 14. So middle of the road. Sure, Conforto could be an upgrade. Uh, but then but you got to also think here, too. With the White Sox, you know, you got Andrew Vaughn who can play out there. You know, Gavin Sheets. You know, you can do a rotation of them. Outfield, DH. Um, I don't think Conforto, I don't think they need to go after it, go after him. I, I think it would be fine if you did. Um, I guess I'll, I'll give a thumbs up here. I'll, I'll be nice to Mr. Jim here. Up next, he thinks the Cleveland Guardians should trade Jose Ramirez to the Blue Jays. My oh my, how many times have I heard this proposal this offseason? I don't see, I understand why 
people think the Guardians should trade Jose Ramirez. He's obviously one of the better players in the game. He's going to be a free agent soon in a couple of years, most likely with the way the Indians, you know, go about things. Francisco Lindor being an example. They tend not to bring these guys back on big contracts. Jose Ramirez, to me, you have this guy on a bargain right now, and I think he just makes your team better, and I think the Guardians are actually pretty good and I think they could compete this year I think they could be a dark horse team this year and yes he would be good for the Blue Jays I just don't see the Guardians doing it I just really don't um I, I just don't see it to be completely honest I mean and he's also offering a package here where he says here the Guardians could ask the Blue Jays for a package centered on third baseman Jordan Groshans outfielder out outfielder Otto Lopez and right-hander Gunnar Hoglund well they would if he's saying here centered on, then you're going to have to add a couple of guys. But if it's just those guys, you're still $20 million of value uh, short of a Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez, you're going to remember, like I said, he's cheap. He's very affordable, making around $10 million per season or so, something around that. Um, he's obviously one of the better players in the game. Uh, you're going to have to offer quite the package for a Jose Ramirez. He's saying here uh, that would be quite a haul for two years of Jose Ramirez. Well, according to the... Uh, baseball trade values yes not a yes it's a good haul but not nearly enough what you could get for Jose Ramirez to me I think the Guardians hang on to him I don't think they should trade him he makes your team better honestly explore if you could get him signed up to an extension if you're the Indians come on let's let's get someone signed up to an extension Jose Ramirez is a good player get him locked up you know why not you know you traded away Francisco Lindor See what Jose Ramirez is going to cost. I think the Guardians, if they can lock him up long term, that'd be great. So overall, though, I, uh, I'm going to give this a thumbs down. That is one for four. Up next, he thinks the Detroit Tigers should sign Zach Granke to a one-year $10 million deal. You know, it's not bad. I actually kind of like that. I actually like this one. If we take a look here, you already brought Eduardo Rodriguez in, and then you got four young guys behind him. Casey Mize, Tariq Skubal, uh, Matt Manning, Tyler Alexander. I think Zach Granke, a veteran guy uh, for this rotation, I think that would bring some good leadership for this young starting pitching for the Detroit Tigers. They could be a sneaky team coming up this year. You brought in Javier Baez, too. I actually like it. Zach, uh, Zach Granke on the Tigers? Why not? Two for five. Up next, he thinks the Astros should sign Trevor Story to a seven-year, $204 million deal. I don't like it. Not a fan of this. Uh, Trevor Story last year, bit of a down year compared to his standards offensively. If we take a look here, uh, a 25 offense in 2019. Uh, that dropped down to 10 in 2020, but you got to remember that was over a short season. So that's right around what he was doing. And then 2021, it dipped to 6.1 over a full season. There were concerns from scouts about his throws. They were thinking something was wrong with his elbow. Didn't quite have the offensive season that he's used to. His slugging was down. His on base was down. Down, batting average was down uh home runs were still all right not near what he did in 2019 2018 rbis were still pretty good still some good speed 20 stolen bases i think trevor story me personally i think he should go get a one-year deal somewhere establish some value uh, maybe i'm being biased here i think he'd be a great fit for the red sox he can move over to second but if he wants to stay short I can understand that because he wants to keep his value high, but I think a one-year deal somewhere would make some sense. I understand why the Astros would want Story because what's going to happen with Carlos Correa? I still think there's a good chance Correa could come back. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but to me, the Astros, if you're going to move on from Carlos Correa, I mean, you have right there Jeremy Pena as the next man up this guy has been really good in the minor leagues the bat came alive last year in the minor leagues the defense is really good he's got a little bit of speed that's the guy that you turn to um to me I don't think the Astros personally I don't think they should go after Trevor Story especially a seven-year 204 million dollar deal if you're gonna cough up that money I mean you might as well just bring Correa back I know Correa is gonna be way more expensive than this and more of a long term but Correa has been your guy to me, I think if you're going to spend the big money, go after Correa. If you can get Trevor Story in a short-term deal, sure, I agree with that. Um, but overall, Jim Bowden, two for six. For the Kansas City Royals, he thinks they should sign Andrew Chafin to a two-year, $16 million deal. Uh, sure. 
I guess. I mean, why not? I mean, it never hurts to add a reliever, especially someone like Andrew Chafin. Wonder if he's going to go after more years. I would imagine he'd probably want to try and go for a three-year deal, kind of like how Joe Kelly did. Uh, got a three-year deal with the Dodgers. But, yeah, he's not wrong. He's one of the better free agents, uh, free agent relievers remaining out there. I would love Andrew Chafin personally. He says here they would like to add a lefty reliever. Uh, if I'm taking a look at the current bullpen, uh, the current projected bullpen, you got Jake Brents, who had himself a really good season last year, lefty. 27 years old, 3.66 ERA over 64 innings. Uh, you have Gabe Spire in middle relief, lefty. Uh, small sample size last year, but a 1.17 ERA. So, um, you know, they got a couple of quality lefties. Sure, could you use like a, a good setup guy like an Andrew Chafin? Yeah, I think personally, I think the Royals, if you can, I would love for them to add um, some... Uh, starting pitching if you can if we're taking a look at the starting pitching from last year kansas city they only ranked 19th in starting pitching last year and if we take a look at the offense from la uh, last year kansas city didn't rank too well on that either uh 23rd overall i think when you're looking at last year's numbers the bullpen was their best asset last year while the starting pitching and the offense didn't look all that good. I would love it if they could maybe add a Michael Conforto. I think that would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you can add maybe another guy for the starting rotation, maybe you can swing a trade possibly for someone like a Chris Bassett. I think that could be pr uh, pretty good. Or maybe Sean Benaya. I think that could work out as well. Um, it never hurts to add a reliever, so I guess I'll uh, I'll give this a thumbs up. So three for seven. Up next, he thinks the Angels should trade outfield prospect Jordan Adams to the Marlins for left-handed pitching prospect Jake Eater and righty Zach McCambly. I can't believe I'm about to say this, Jim. I like this trade. I can't believe it. I, this is, wow. I never thought I would see the day. It checks out on baseball trade values. And I like this trade. Why? Because the Angels, they're getting some pitching in a creative way. And they're giving up a pretty good prospect in Jordan Adams. Uh, taking a look here with Jake Eater. He is the current number six prospect in the Marlins system. And if you're taking a look... At Jordan Adams, he's the number four in the Angels system. I think with the Angels, they have an abundance of outfielders right now. They got Joe Adele, you got Brandon Marsh. I think Jordan Adams is someone that is expendable. Uh, if we go take a look at Jordan Adams, last year, it looks like you know, he had a tough season last year, but he's uber athletic. Even though he only hit 217 with a 290 on base and a 310 slugging, he had 18 stolen bases, 277 at bats. There's a lot of upside for him. If you take a look, the speed at 80. Yes, he's going to have to come a long way with the bat, but the fielding and the speed and the arm are all very good, especially the speed. Maybe the Marlins can figure out something with him. Uh, but as for Jake Eater, I think this is a really underrated pitching prospect. If you take a look at the numbers that he had last year, over 72 innings, a 1.77 ERA, 99 strikeouts, and only 27 walks. Uh, taking a look, and that was in double A. Very good numbers overall. I think Jake Eater could be a very sneaky pickup for the Angels if they were to go this route. And again, the values are pretty close. I mean, baseball trade values accepts the trade. Jim, I'm going to give you a thumbs up here. Overall, we're four for eight. For the Minnesota Twins, he thinks they should trade for Frankie Montez from the Oakland A's. You know, I like it. I like the move. I think that would be really good for the Twins rotation. Frankie Montez was really good last year. 32 starts, 187 innings pitched, a 3.37 ERA. Uh, same exact number for the FIP, a four-win pitcher last year. Frankie Montez, I think, was very underrated last year. He would slide in very, very nicely to this Twins rotation that is, as of right now, I mean, without Jose Barrios anymore, it's looking rather thin. I know you got Dylan Bundy, but come on. I think we need a little bit more here i do like bailey ober and joe ryan um i thought those were pretty nice pieces they got back in the tampa trade with nelson cruz frankie montez i think if you add him at the top of this rotation i actually think it's not a bad looking rotation and then you have a pretty good lineup uh you got some decent arms in that bullpen i think frankie montez would be a great addition for the minnesota twins they need pitching and frankie montez would be solid give them innings uh he is suggesting a trade this is where he loses me a little bit not the idea but the trade package he says uh 
Going back to the A's would be Matt Cantorino and Josh Winder. If we go take a look, uh, Winder is their number six on Baseball America, and Cantorino is number nine. Uh, that trade is not going to get it done. Frankie Montes, as of right now, got to remember the talent level, the contract control that he has, the age. He's got a good value, $39.6 million worth of value. Uh, going back to the A's in this package would be 227 million. One more guy. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna go get a good arm like a Frankie Montez, you're gonna have to probably send back three good arms in place. This package, I wonder if it would get it done. Would the Twins want to give up this much pitching? I wonder. I don't know. But to get someone like a Frankie Montez, you've got to give up something good to get something good. Could you take out one of these pictures? You know, maybe like Winder, maybe replace it with another prospect. But you're gonna have to have around this value to get someone like Frankie Montez. But overall. I actually, I really like this for the Twins. If you can get Frankie Montas, that would be fantastic. So I'll give it a thumbs up. And overall, Jim Bowden, you are five for nine. Up next, he thinks the Yankees should do a blockbuster trade, acquiring Matt Olson, Ramon Laureano, and Chris Bassett from the A's. This would be a heck of a package, and it would check off a lot of boxes for the Yankees. Uh, you would getting, you'd be getting an upgrade in center field with Ramon Laureano over Aaron Hicks. Obviously, Matt Olson would slide into first base, and then Chris Bassett would be a really nice addition for the rotation behind Garrett Cole. That'd be a pretty good one-two punch if you ask me. However, this is where he loses me now i see the thinking behind it he's saying here the deal would have to be built around one of the yankees top three shortstop prospects Vol uh, volpe peraza or trey sweeney along with a top pitching outfield and catching prospect a package of five of their top 25 prospects is probably what it would take to make a game-changing trade like this well in my opinion, I think the Yankees want to hang on to Volpe, so I would use Peraza here. However, this is where I get lost. If you go to baseball trade values, there's a lot of value. Ramon Laureano, you have to remember, he's got sneaky value. He can do it all. He's got a decent bat. He's got good defense out there, and he's got speed. Uh, Matt Olson obviously has good value because of his bat, and Bassett obviously is a good solid arm one more year left of control so you're looking at around 123 million dollars worth of value if you do peraza which is your second best prospect at the moment dominguez your top outfield prospect uh gill your top uh, pitching prospect wells your top catching prospect and i threw in medina their next good pitching prospect uh you're still you're looking short here 76.20 if you took out Peraza and you threw in, let's say, you know, huh, would you shock all of Yankee fans everywhere and tra trade away Volpe? If you took out Peraza and you put in Volpe, you're actually still, in terms of these values, still looking a little short. Now, baseball trade values would accept it. So you would be pretty close with this kind of a package. There, with Peraza, you're not going to get that done. It's not going to be enough. Uh, Dominguez, his value dropped a lot. Uh, yes, there is still a lot of intrigue behind him, a lot of potential. But at this point, it's just potential. You don't know. He hasn't really put much onto the field at this point. Gill has definitely shown flashes. Medina definitely has a good arm. Uh, Volpe was really good in A ball last year. But Obviously, he would be the highest value player going back to the A's. And then Wells, there's a lot of promise with him, especially with his bat for the catching position. Not quite sure what he's going to be. Is he going to stick a catcher? Could he end up moving to the outfield? Something like that. So a package with Volpe would get this done. Would the Yankees want to give up Volpe? I don't know. But with... He did suggest Volpe. So, you know, he, he said it would have to be one of the top Yankees shortstops, uh, shortstop prospects. So... Would they trade him? I don't know. I don't know if they would get rid of Volpe. They've made, Boone has made comments saying they love Peraza, they love Volpe. But this, this would have to be the package to get this done. If you want these three players, you're going to have to give up this package. I don't see the Yankees doing this kind of a package. I'll give it a thumbs up because he at least suggested those three. But, but then again, would the Yankees part with Volpe? I don't know. But obviously these three guys right here would address a lot of needs for the yankees a package with peraza would not get this done a package with volpe would get this done but would the yankees trade volpe i don't know but the the idea the thinking behind it because of that i'll give it a thumbs up 
Speaking of the A's, he thinks that they should trade Matt Chapman and Ramon Laureano to the Phillies. I've actually talked about uh, a similar trade like this that was in a prior video where I talked about Jim Bowden trades. Um, I don't like this trade at all. I understand the thinking behind it. Chapman, Laureano to the Phillies. Chapman would be an upgrade over Alec Bohm. Ramon Laureano would address their center field needs. But overall, uh, for the A's, this is not a good trade. They're very far apart in value here. Uh, this is not good. Alec Bohm, you have to remember, yes, he was in the running for Rookie of the Year a couple of years ago in 2020. He was a high draft pick. There's a lot of promise with Alec Bohm, but not a great season last year. Value diminished a lot. Um, yes, there was potential, but as of right now, his value is not very high. Andrew Painter, yes, I think he's actually a very good pitching prospect. There's a lot of promise with him, a high school arm. I thought a very underrated arm coming out of that draft last year. But overall, right now, just a $10 million value, $26.2 million total. Uh, Ramon, Ramon Laureano, like I mentioned earlier in the Yankee trade, he can do it all. He, can hit, he has a decent bat, plays great defense, has good speed. I forgot to mention as well, he plays a premium position in center field. So that is going to increase his value a lot as well. So that's why you're seeing such a high value with him. He's not he's not expensive. He has control. So that is why you're seeing such a high value with Ramon Laureano. And then obviously Matt Chapman, 24 million. Um, there's a lot to like about Matt Chapman. The power is still there. Average needs to come up. On base needs to come up. But he's giving you great defense out there. Uh, still has a couple of years of control. Overall, this is just way too expensive. Um, I'm going to give this a thumbs down just because of just how far apart this trade is. Jim, you're, you're doing good there for a second, but now you're kind of working backwards here. Up next, he thinks the Seattle Mariners should sign designated hitter Nelson Cruz to a one-year $12 million deal. I see the intrigue used to play for the Mariners. The Mariners could definitely use another bat, I think. A power bat would be really nice. Uh, considering their offense last year, it was more of a clutch offense. It was inc in an incredibly clutch lineup last year. However, night to night, it was not a great offense. They need to get more of a consistent offense going. Is Nelson Cruz the answer, though? I don't think so. If we're taking a look at the Mariners right now, they got a lot of guys vying for playing time. As of right now, Kyle Lewis is projected for the DH spot. Could he end up going back out to the outfield? Yeah, that's very possible. But there's a lot of guys here where they could, you know, really rotate some guys in and out. I think personally, Chris Bryant would be the better signing. I don't like the idea of Nelson Cruz because he's just going to just jam up the designated hitter position. I think Nelson Cruz should go to a team in the National League where, you know, they're going to be most likely having a designated hitter out there as well. Um, and obviously some DH spots out in the National League are going to open up. So I think Nelson Cruz would be better off going, you know, maybe somewhere like the Padres. I could see something like that where they could use a bat. Overall, I, you know, yeah, there's definitely a need for a bat here. Is Nelson Cruz the right bat? No. So I'm going to give this a thumbs down. Up next, he thinks the Tampa Bay Rays should sign Joe Kelly to a two-year $17 million deal. I mean, it's always great to add a bullpen arm for any team. It's, it's never going to be a bad thing. But this just doesn't line up with what the Rays do. They're not going to spend $17 million over two years on a guy like Joe Kelly. That's just not their style. I mean, if you're taking a look here, the Rays have always been creative in how they get relievers. If you take a look here, look at all these relievers that they've acquired through trade. Um, and Brooks Raley, who they just signed, he was with the Astros last year. They had Ryan Thompson, who was a Rule 5 draft pick. Josh Fleming they drafted back in 2017. Uh, they got a lot of young arms in the minor league leagues too sure joe kelly fits in terms of velocity the rays do like their velocity arms but i just don't see the rays doing it it's very out of their style uh i don't know could they do it sure i don't know what they're gonna do with their own money but i would imagine that they would focus more of that money on more of a position player more of a starting pitcher i don't see them spending all that money on someone for a bullpen guy i mean i love joe kelly don't get me wrong i, I hope joe kelly comes to my red Sox. i think he'd be fantastic um always love me some joe kelly fight club but i don't see the rays doing this so thumbs down for the Texas Rangers, he thinks that they should sign Jorge Soler to a three-year, $45 million deal. Now, I definitely see the fit. 
I do. I do see the fit with a Jorge Soler. If you take a look at the at the Rangers as of right now, their lineup is looking a lot better with guys like Marcus Semyon and Corey Seager being added. Uh, and the DH spot, could you put Jorge Soler as the designated hitter? As of right now, you have Willie Calhoun slotted there. Uh, according to his numbers last year, not really a lot of thump going on right there. Jorge Soler would definitely add some more thump uh, coming off of a World Series championship with the Braves. Uh, sure, he would add some thump. I just don't think that's what the Rangers should do. Their offense, I think, is actually looking pretty good, not just with Semyon and Seager, but Garcia showed a lot of promise last year. If you can just get that on base and the batting average up a bit, I think that would be really good. Nate Lowe, good on base guy. I like him. They got Cole Calhoun too. Um, there's a lot of promise here with this Rangers lineup. Could they use another bat? Sure, absolutely. But don't forget, you have Josh Jung, who could be coming up eventually. There are some bats down in that minor league system. I think what the Rangers need to do is sign some starting pitching. I think they should go after Clayton Kershaw. That's the guy that I think they need to go get. If he's healthy, he's going to give you, he's your opening day starter right away. He's a pitcher that is easily just going to lead your pitching staff, not just with what he can do on the mound, but the leadership that he's going to bring, the just the veteran leadership that he can bring, especially for a lot of these young guys in this rotation, someone like Spencer Howard, Dane Dunning, uh, you know, AJ Alexi, these are guys they could really, really learn a lot from Clayton Kershaw, you know, having uh, Kershaw at the top of the rotation with John Gray, and don't forget someone like Jack Leiter. Uh, Kershaw, I think is the guy you should go after, not Jorge Soler. I think you've already done enough with this offense. Could you go after someone like Seiya? I'd rather go after Seiya Suzuki. If I'm going to go after a bat, Probably be Suzuki, someone that can, you know, provide, you know, a good bat. He can play in the outfield as well, where, you know, Soler can play out there too. But to me, I'd ra I think I'd rather take a chance on someone like a Seiya Suzuki. I, I like the intrigue of him, but to me, I'm not going for a bat. I'm not going for a bat. I'm going for a starting pitcher. And that guy to me is Clayton Kershaw. I do see it, but overall, to me, it's not the right person to ask. So thumbs down. And last but not least, he thinks the Blue Jays should trade for Jose Ramirez. We talked about this earlier. I just don't see the Guardians doing it. I think they're going to hang on to him. He makes their team better. He's cheap. He's affordable. Still has another year of, he has two years left of control. I don't see the Guardians giving up Jose Ramirez. Would he make the Blue Jays a better team? Yes, he would make the Blue Jays a better team. But like I was saying with the Rangers, I don't think this is something that they need to do. I think they need to address that bullpen. Their bullpen last year was not very strong from the beginning to the end of the year. They tried adding a couple of guys here and there, but nothing really worked out for that bullpen. To me, that's where... Yes, I understand you lost Marcus Semien. I get that. I think if you can somehow replace a bat like Marcus Semien, uh, that's obviously going to be great. Uh they could use a lefty bat here. Absolutely, they could use a lefty bat. But to me, I think this lineup is still looking rather good. Um, again, you could use a lefty, sure. But And if you can get Jose Ramirez, if the Guardians would do it, yeah, go get him if you can. I think with the Blue Jays, you have such a squad right now where he's going to make your team better. I think they should go after a bullpen arm. They could definitely use another guy out there. They did bring in Yimi Garcia. I did like that. So I thought that was a good step. I think they need something else, though. If you can add one more guy for this bullpen, I think that would be great. So I will give it, I will give this a thumbs up because, obviously, Jose Ramirez would make your team better. But will the Guardians trade him? I don't know at the end of the day, but I, if I were to make a bet, I don't think they do. I mean, to me, he makes their team better. They're obviously starting a new season uh, or they're starting their season this year with a new name. Uh, they want to have some good energy. They want to have a good team on the field. They have a pretty good team. If you look at the Indians, uh, oh my goodness, the Indians, uh, the Guardians right now, they have a good team. Pretty good offense, good starting pitcher, Shane Bieber, fully healthy this coming year. That's going to be really good for your rotation. Good bullpen, one of the better bullpens in the game last year. I think the Guardians could be a sneaky team. To me, trading Jose Ramirez is only going to make your team weaker. Sure, could you get a uh, just a plethora of prospects for him? Absolutely. If they will trade him, yes. Why not the Blue Jays? Go after Jose Ramirez. I think that would be fantastic if you could. Um, but will the Guardians do it? I don't know, probably not, but for the idea, yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up.
So overall, out of all of these ideas for the first moves that these American League teams should make after the lockout, Jim Bowden scores a 46%. Uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you like any of these ideas? Do you disagree with any of my thoughts? Uh, do you agree with any of my thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments. But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.